your progress. Sometimes your adversary will make it easy for you to get even. But the question is, do you get even? The Bible says he came to the sheep pen. No, let's go down to, yes, verse 3. He came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there and Saul went in to relieve himself. And David and his men were far back in the cave. So the men tell him, look, David, this is Janice's version. Look, now, God has made, don't you see what God did? God made it. You can go kill him. Then we can go home and still catch the Bears game that come on by six. Look. Look what God, look at God, look what God did. He made it easy for you. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, my Lord, the king. When Saul was behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself. No, let's go back up. Let's go back to verse 4. I will give you the enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Verse 5, afterward David was conscience stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lift my hand against him, for he is anointed of the Lord. With these words, David rebuked his men, y'all shut up, and did not allow them to tax Saul. Go somewhere and sit down. And Saul left the cave and went his way. Then David went out of the cave and called out, My Lord, the king. Saul looked up behind him, and David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say David is bent or harming you? Look, why are you gossiping, dude? You listen to the hearsay. I didn't want to do anything to you. This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. I could have killed you, but I didn't. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lift my hand against my master because he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, I look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but did not kill you. So you're standing in front of <coughs> your enemy, your adversary. You're feeling this pressure because this is the person, Val, that put you in the position that you're in now. And you're finding yourself explaining to them, look, when I could have cussed you out, I did when I could have popped you in your act, I did. Come on now. When I could have stolen from you, I did. When I could have had them people come get you, I did. Why are you believing everything that they say I did? First of all, how come you didn't come and ask me? I could have gotten you, but I didn't. We don't get revenge or lay hands on our adversary or our enemy. This is when you let God fight your battle. That's right. Part of the progress under pressure is learning to let God handle certain things, even when it's so easy for you to do it. Learn how to let God deal with it. Now, the next thing is, well, what happens when we let God take control? Our enemies are sometimes are, are weakened for a period of time. Verse 16 in the 24th chapter says, When David finished saying this, Saul asked, Is that your voice, David, my son? And he wept aloud. You are more righteous than I. He said, You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. You have just now told me of the good you did to me. The Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. When a man finds his enemy, does he let him get away unharmed? May the Lord reward you for the way you treated me today. I know that you will surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants or wipe out my name from my father's family. So David gave his oath to Saul. Then Saul returned home. But David and his men went up into the stronghold. Look, you got pressure. You're trying to make headway. When you are standing in front of your adversary, sometimes, it's just okay, Ma, just to be quiet because they will speak good things into your life and they don't even know. Mm -hmm. Listen to what Saul told him. Look, David, now, I know you're going to be king. That's prophecy. Mm -hmm. I'm prophesying over your life. You're going to be king. Mm -hmm. And all I want you to do is spare my people. And they ain't got the crime. Isn't that a trick somebody do you wrong and then when you confront them, they get the crime? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's you done sat up here and went without food They done stole your money, stole your man Stole your woman, stole your car, stole everything They could, lied on you, talked about you Like a dog, and then here they 
I'm, I'm just so sorry I did that to you. Can you imagine what was going through David's mind? You chump. How you play me like a cheeseburger and then I'm just supposed to forgive you? But David was righteous. Yes. And he did what God said despite the pressure. That's right. He knew that there was a greater good on the way. Right. So That's what did right. he do? He listened to the side story. He hugged him. And then he kept it moving. Let me tell you something, family. You listen to the side story. You give them a quick hug. Quick, quick hug. You don't let folks hug you too long because they be in the stack. You're in the back. Again, quick hug. And then you keep it moving. Saul goes back to the palace because he thinks all is well, but David went back to his stronghold because he knew it was something else coming. This battle not over this easy. Paul, it's all playing politics. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you feel the pressure? Revenge is right there, but you don't take it. And then you confront your adversary. They boo-hoo and cry. You hug them and you, you move on and get ready. Your blessing is coming, but it's not right there. But you let God continue to fight your battles. So it feels so good sometimes, you know. I'm your sister, you know. I'm your daughter, you know. And sometimes it feels real good just to give somebody a good old, yeah. Just call them out their name at least one, two times to their face. <laughs> let me tell you what, Pops, let me tell you now. I'm your oldest grandbaby. I'm going to be honest with you. I have done some cussing. And I have called some folks out of their names, and it felt really good for that 30 seconds while I was getting it out. <laughs> All right. Now ask me 30 seconds later, did it help anything? I'm sorry. Did it help me after I didn't cuss them? No. no. <laughs> I couldn't let God fight my battles, right? See, that's what David did. Instead of telling us, oh, you know what? I'm going to go on here and just offer you right now. Nope. I'm going to go ahead and let God fight my battles. That's right. But I'm going to take this hug from you. So I'm glad you feel sorry for now. And then I'm going to go back to where God told me to mm -hmm. so that I can be safe. That's right. How do you make that progress, Andre, on the pressure? Mm -hmm. How do you get past that burning feel of just going ahead and handling it yourself and turning away mm -hmm. and letting God fight your back? Mm -hmm. I'm quite how you get there, because it's tempting. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and let you know that that good custom is tempting. Go ahead and take my phone and just trick myself. Don't for me. Nope. I'm going to go ahead. Because God's going to give me a bigger one later, so don't worry about it. You did me wrong. How do you make progress under pressure? You know that God is going to work this thing out for you. Let's go really quick to chapter 25. And we are going to go down to the fourth verse. While David was in the desert, he heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So he said, 10 young men to them, go up into Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. Now I hear that it is sheep shearing time. When your shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them. And the whole time they were at Carmel and nothing of theirs was missing. We protected them. Sometimes God has you protecting something that's not yours. Hmm. How do you do that? I know he don't like me, but I got to protect him. Ma, you know she don't like you, but you got to pray for her. Hmm. That's it. I quite, you know he don't like you. But you got to go over there and lay hands on it. Sometimes God sends you to protect mm -hmm. something that is not yours, which is what David was doing when the sheep were at Carmel. Ask your own servants and they will tell you. Therefore, be favorable toward my young men since we come in a festive time. Please give your servants and your son David whatever you can find for them. When David's men arrived, they gave Nabal this message in David's name. Then they waited. They will answer David's screams. Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water, the meat I have slaughtered from my shears, and give it to men coming from who knows where? Mm 